Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys about an exercise that I have a love-hate relationship, and that is the standing barbell press. Uh, and I'm pretty well known for promoting this online as an important exercise. That people should treat it as a primary exercise. You should get maximally strong at it, and I don't consider it to be an optional exercise for anyone in the pursuit of size or strength. Right? I don't consider it to be optional. Um, and it's tied with the conventional deadlift in my top two spots for favorite exercises. But I will also be the first to admit that from a programming perspective and as a max effort type exercise, the press, and that's the historical name for it, does run into problems. And, and there is something that people need to think about when they're programming this exercise in regard to that. Now, you have people like me who do want to test their max on it. We want to test our max on it. And it is a good test of strength. It's a good display of strength. You know, just like the conventional deadlift, you might not necessarily want to always train all out max effort singles on the conventional deadlift very often. Um, it's better reserved as a display of strength rather than as a training protocol. And the same can be said of the press. Uh, so it kind of has a unique place in your training in regard to that because it's an exercise that's very, very stubborn. And when you train it for volume, it brings a lot to the table. But it's also one of those exercises that just seems to bury you and it seems to stall indefinitely when you treat it as a true heavy max effort type exercise. Um, and I think we saw that last year with me when I finally got my press up to 225 legit strict press while doing my Bulgarian training. But I had used concurrent periodization to get it up to like 210, 215. And then when I switched over to Bulgarian, it peaked and I got up to 225 every day. And it pretty well stalled there. It didn't go back up. Once I started treating it as a max effort exercise with just singles, it only went up two and a half pounds throughout all those months. When I had other lifts, it went up. All right, my squat went up 50 pounds. My squat went up 50 pounds during that phase of training. So... You know, that's the interesting thing with something like the press. It's one of these exercises that just due to the nature of it, it's hard to program as a, a primary exercise or a max effort lift. And I find myself these days, even lately, you guys notice I only do it for heavy singles once a month. Like even the footage you, you see in here, we're taking four weeks apart, literally four weeks apart. I haven't done any singles on this exercise outside of that. Uh, and what I'm doing more and more of these days is that I'm reserving it for my volume days. And I might go ahead and pull the strict press completely out of even accessory for my max effort and focus on just doing it for, for large numbers of sets on my dynamic effort days. So here's what I would say about that. Um, you know, the press, as much as I might love it and as much as I think it is a fantastic display of strength, it's best reserved as a more volume oriented exercise for more, most people out there, right? Now, so those of you who are gonna go compete in strength lifting, that's a little different because that's an actual competition lift in that sport. In which case, if you wanna go compete in that, you might wanna definitely spend some time building your max up on it. But I would say for the vast majority of lifters out there, it needs to be reserved more for a training volume exercise. Or training volume and, and where does it fit in well it fits in when you need to save your shoulders a little bit on the bench press because here's one of the problems we run into with with benching and i mean all bench variations that includes the incline bench decline bench um, it can put certain amounts of wear and tear on your shoulders and again the strict press the standing overhead press actually brings a lot to the table for shoulder health when, when done correctly People need to understand that. It actually isn't a risky exercise. When done correctly, it is impossible to get a shoulder impingement on it. People who are getting shoulder impingements are people who are doing it seated. Doing it standing done correctly, if you go through the correct bar path, you're not going to be at any risk of that sort of problem. It's actually a fantastic exercise for shoulder health. In fact, it can balance a lot of things out. You know, when people always talk about over, say, in bodybuilding type training of getting pulling equal to your pushing. Well, the press doesn't count as a push for regard to that because it's a neutral exercise in regard to some of those factors we're worried about with, with uh, shoulder health. Um, it actually can count as non-pushing volume in terms of that. So really you only need to balance like your bench pressing type volume with pulling exercises if you're trying to get a balance ratio there. That the standing press uh, doesn't have the same problems 
that we have with bench pressing in terms of shoulder balance. It just doesn't, and it's a more balanced exercise. And it's a fantastic trap builder. It builds the upper traps. It actually does work the side delts, works the long head of the tricep. It brings a lot of other muscles into play for general hypertrophy that might be missed on some of your, your bench pressing and other presses, even though it's still you know a very delt dominant exercise. So really it adds a lot in terms of muscle balance but where does that play out in the grand scheme of programming? Well, that means for most people, it's not really an ideal max effort exercise unless you're wanting to go do a display of strength. Right? It really isn't. Um, and again, as much as I like to treat it like a primary exercise sometimes, I would say in most people's programming, it should probably be placed in the category of being uh, an assistance movement, even though I have strength standards for it. But you know what? You can calculate... A strength standard off of your triples you can calculate a strength standard off your five rep max without actually having to hit the max because at the end of the day what i find on the press is that coming in and hitting heavy singles on it only helps you get better at maybe peaking for your max it doesn't really do much in the way of hypertrophy it doesn't do much in the way of strength building um, you know and it's something you just need to practice a little bit if you want to peak up to hit a max for a display of strength later uh, I think it works very, very well more into your high set training in which you're worried about shoulder fatigue from too much benching to allow you to get a lot more pressing volume in with a pressing movement that works muscles differently, that we get more tricep long head in, more of the total shoulder girdle in, uh, more of the upper chest in. But when it comes to just sheer hypertrophy, I mean, a bench press or a dip in certain ways brings more to the table for the upper body. Um, and sometimes in cases of, of even strength building, particularly if we're gonna go really, really heavy. Uh, you know, we start hitting things of 90% or higher. Um, I personally feel like for me, the press is one of those exercises that I seem to get the best overall strength out of it, not only on that lift, uh, the most muscle mass out of it, and even better carryover as a strength builder to my other lifts, like improving my bench press. I feel like it works better if you stay in something like the 80 to 85% range or maybe even as low as the 75% range. You know, it, it really needs to be put for most people into the place of, of being a strength builder in regards to that. And it's one of those lifts that when you just go, go too heavy on, instead of a lot of practice with a lot of volume, you just tend to stall on this exercise so easily. And I would say that's the biggest problem with it. You know, people always say they stall on this exercise. It gets really hard because it, it, it is an exercise that responds better, in my experience, to training volume with practice than actually coming in and trying to hit heavy, heavy limit sets. My press goes up the best when I do very, very high sets with it. And people say, what do you mean? Well, I, I actually originally got my press over 200 and then eventually to my 225 by doing as many as 10 sets of two to three reps. And even now, uh, lately, and again, this video will come out later, of course, uh, at this time, I'm doing like eight doubles with it on Thursdays. And that helped me push my muscle memory back and get my press back to 225. So it, it's, it's an exercise that tends to respond very, very well to high set training because of the practice aspect. It has a strong motor unit learning component with the bar path on it. And it brings a lot to the table but I just feel like it's an exercise that for, for regular training purposes, trying to hit really, really heavy sets with it, uh, maximum effort sets, just doesn't produce results. You, you burn out, you stall, uh, and you'll stay strong on it, but you tend to stall for extended periods of time when you treat this exercise that way, whereas you have other exercises that will excel when you do that. Right, the squat, in my experience, is a perfect example. The squat tends to excel when you do that. The press, not so much. It press, not so much. Uh, so again, it's one of those exercises that I think really fits better even for strength building purposes into a higher set training, very, very high volume training. And that high volume doesn't have to be high rep, but it needs to be high set. It's an exercise that responds well to large numbers of first reps. And when you're going really heavy, you just can't do that many sets. You just can't, and you don't get that many first reps. Um, but I mean, it still takes its place as one of my top two favorite exercises of all time. I continue to train it. I continue to have strength standards on it. But 
I would say to a lot of people, programming it correctly seems to be difficult. And I, I think it's because people focus too much sometimes on trying to move the heaviest weight possible in their training on this lift instead of just when they want to display their strength, which is what I've been doing only once a month, uh, versus actually getting in and getting large amounts of practice on it with very high numbers of sets, like something in the range of, of seven to 10 sets in a workout on it. Uh, it's one of these exercises that just responds much, much better to more modest weights with large, large numbers of sets. And, and that's been my experience working with this lift over the years. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.